energy incinerator 800 kilometres from homes and 1.8 kilometres from schools in Western Sydney. There are three schools in close proximity to the proposed incinerator. Minchinbury Public School, James Erskine Primary School, Erskine Park High School. Would you like your children to go to a school that's that close to an incinerator? No I certainly wouldn't. Not at all. Dialogue, the owners of the next generation, are proposing to burn 1.3 million tonnes of garbage every year. The waste to energy incinerator would run 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the next 30 years. The site is five kilometres from Prospect Reservoir, which forms part of our drinking water for 4.5 million people in Greater Sydney. The Next Generation's Environmental Impact Statement confirms, now this is in their own paperwork, the proposed facility may release substance to atmosphere which has the potential to harm human health. This statement confirms in their own words that yes, this incinerator is dangerous to human health. Incinerator emissions are a source of dioxin and toxic metals such as arsenic, mercury and cadmium, and of more than 200 organic chemicals. Emissions can spread up to 30 kilometres and would include a toxic cocktail of dioxins, heavy metal and fine particulate pollution. Dangerous ultra-fine particulates or nanoparticles are less than 1 20th the size of a human hair and are invisible to the naked eye. So, you know, when people say, you know, you're not going to see any smoke coming out of the furnace, well, you're not going to see it because it's invisible to the naked eye. These particles have been linked to diseases such as cancer, Alzheimer's, autism and asthma. There are currently no state or national air regulations, quality standard license conditions or other regulatory measures to capture particles this small. We already have bad air quality. There are days where the EPA warns people in the Western Sydney to stay inside. On the 23rd of February this year, between 3pm and 5pm St Mary's, in St Mary's, which is the closest air monitoring station to the incinerator site. The reported ozone levels exceeded national air quality standards, and that's before the incinerator has even been built. Then add on air pollution from 224,000 extra vehicles each year, combined with air emissions from an incinerator that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We don't need any more pollution dumped on us to make us sick and shorten our lives. The incinerator will produce 400 tonnes, 400,000 tonnes of ash every year that needs to be landfilled, with an additional 50,000 tonnes of air pollution control residues that are toxic and need to be encased in concrete before landfill. This is definitely not safer than composting. The main concern is that these residues could leach into ecosystems and spoil drinking water and resources such as Prospect Reservoir. How can the community trust the next generation to follow the EPA guidelines when they have a history of operating outside the law? Many companies owned by Ian Maloof have a history of breaching environmental protection, protect, protection guidelines in relation to stockpiling and illegally disposing of asbestos. In 2002, Alexandria Landfill was issued with four clean-up notices after the Office of Environment and Health received complaints relating to odour at the St Peter's site. Inspectors found landfill water was causing the stench. Another clean-up notice was issued after failed attempts to fix the problem and complaints increased. In 2007, Kathkin Proprietary Limited was found with 1,300 cubic metres of asbestos contaminated soil levelled and spread across it. This property belonged to Mr Malou's mother-in-law as trustee for his own five children. Companies linked to Ian Malou, owner of The Next Generation, were subject to five clean-up orders prior to 2011, according to the Office of Environmental and Heritage. 
In 2011, Boiling Proprietary Limited, owned by Mrs. Malouf, had a 170,000 cubic metre stockpile of waste con contaminated with asbestos at the Alexandria Landfill site. In 2012, Alexandria Landfill was fined $3,750 for polluting water with contaminated water. A surprise inspection found a pipe connected to contaminated water, which was being pumped into the stormwater drain. In 2015, Alexandria Landfill failed to comply with an EPA clean-up directive for stockpiled asbestos. $50 million of taxpayers' money was used to clean up the site for the Department of Roads and Traffic Authority. Dang. Now, that's taxpayer money that's being used to clean up the mess. This is not clean energy, as the next, energy, next generation is stating, but a return to the dark ages. The technology proposed for the incinerator is not new, but it's 16 years old and has been phased out in Europe due to air emissions concerns. We have huge support against this. We have huge support from lots of people against this incinerator. We have the community, we have the Greens, the EPA, Blacktown Council, Hawkesbury Council, Penrith Council, Western Sydney Local Health District, and Labor, all coming out and standing with the community against this crazy idea for an incinerator so close to homes and schools. With a strong community campaign, we can win this. We can achieve this by community members standing together to stop it. If you have never protested before in your life, now is the time to start with the future of our children. To stay informed, please fill in our contact sheet to receive all updates. So there's a contact sheet um, at these tables and there's petitions. Um, if you get some no incinerators stickers here tonight and stick them on your car, letterbox, anywhere you think would be a good place to have them. Um, sign our petition, get a copy of our petition, ask your friends and neighbours to sign it. Come to any direct actions outside the incinerator site. Follow us on Facebook, we're No Incinerator for Western Sydney. And the most important thing is come to the, the PAC meeting. So when it's announced that the government are going to have a public meeting and they're going to discuss if it's going to go ahead and people will have an opportunity to get up and speak, we all need to come to that. It's going to be during the week on a work day because they make it as hard as possible for you. But we all have to just come. Bring whoever you can bring. If you, you know, get up there and speak and say if you don't want to have it if you don't want it to go ahead. Because this is our opportunity now. You know, it's our opportunity now to say, no, we don't want this to go ahead. And if we don't say it, then all they're going to say to us is, well, you had the opportunity and you said nothing. So we've got to stand together, and together we can stop this. Thank you. Now, our first speaker for the night is Kerry Bradbury.